that happened in what should have been a secure compound in the southern city of Kandahar, the same region where Canadian troops spent six years fighting. The country is two days away from national elections, and the Taliban has claimed responsibility. Senior correspondent Susan Ormiston here now, because Susan, you have reported from Afghanistan a number of times now. And so what do we know about what happened here? Yeah, well, the shooting happened just after a high-level meeting at the governor's compound with the governor of Kandahar, the U.S. general, and Kandahar's police chief. And ironically, they were reassuring local elders about election security. We know there's going to be some violence, but uh, I'm very confident that your forces are prepared for this election. And then, Andrew, just after that, a small group ushered General Miller to the waiting helicopter, and one of the governor's own bodyguards opened fire and shot the police chief in the back, killed him, killed his intelligence officer. General Miller escaped, but the governor himself was injured. And you know, it is shocking, even in Afghanistan at this stage, that the Taliban was able to infiltrate the governor's own security detail and get so close to this U.S. commander. Right, and so that is going to be a big question moving forward. Another one, though, is around one of the men who was killed, the region's head of police. Why was he such an important Figure. He was very important. The most powerful security figure in the South, Abdul Razak, 41 years old, colorful, some say a brutal police commander. But the government in Kabul was relying on him and has for years to keep a steely grip on Kandahar security, keep the Taliban back. And he did that for them. And for the most part, the West complied with that. Now, I want to show you in 2007 in his compound when we interviewed Abdul Razak about Border Patrol and security. He was the head of Border Patrol at the time. We were talking to him about corruption. Uh, very controversial past. He was a warlord before this ascent to state power. And as a chief of a police in Kandahar, he was accused of corruption, of disappearing some in custody. Now, the Taliban hated him. They tried to kill him several times, but he had these deep roots in the intelligence community and a loyal following. And tonight, we're told in Kandahar, many are mourning his death and worried about the days to come. Mm -hmm. Well, the days to come, I mean, the timing of all of this is critical. Elections just around the corner. Yeah, the Taliban has got to see this as a big score, a big loss for the Kabul government. In a third of the country, Andrew, it's already too unstable to go out and vote. So there we have this. And now you have Kandahar's most senior political figure, the governor in hospital. I spoke to his brother, Turwesa, tonight. He was the Afghan-Canadian who was the former governor of Kandahar. You know, think that the U.S. commander, General Miller, just took over command a month ago. And now he has a very grim taste of what's ahead, particularly with these elections. Senior correspondent, Susan Ormiston, thanks so much. Okay.